top 25 matchup coming your way. Number 12, Virginia Tech, number 13, Texas. It is early in the season, but this one is must-see. Thank you so much for joining us. Tyler Denning, Cat Osterman. Cat, we just saw Virginia Tech play, but really the story for both of these teams, offense. Yeah, the offense has been huge for both these teams. Texas on a tear, hitting 389 as a team right now. Seven home runs, 19 doubles, and it's coming across the lineup. We've seen the freshman Leanne Good and Vivi Martinez set the tone. But last weekend, the returners got in on the action with Alyssa Washington heating up. Jordan Whitaker owning that pinch hit spot. We'll see her in the starting lineup today. But there you see what their offense has been able to do so far this season. Third in Division One in batting average at 389. Extra base hits, pretty good, and they score some runs as well. And that's exactly what we saw Virginia Tech just do, run rule victory. Yeah, on the other side, the Hokies head coach, Pete DeMore, says they can hit with anybody, and they showed that this morning. They scratched out, or I shouldn't even say scratched out, banged out 11 hits, or 11 runs, six extra base hits, 10 hits total all across the board. Freshman Emma Jackson gonna get a start after going two for two in a pinch hitting roll, but the Hokie offense got started early and never looked back. Yeah, we saw a little bit of everything, the long ball, the hard hit balls for a team that won the ACC last year. 10 hits, six extra base hits across those 11 runs in the run rule victory. Pete Damore, head coach for Virginia Tech, the 2022 ACC Coach of the Year. is a program, you had mentioned it, first matchup we saw that's just gotten better each year in terms of their success. Yeah, each year they build on it. They've been able to make regionals now, then host, supers, then host. And, you know, he's really excited about what they've put together. And Tegan Thronk had a big game in game one. She blasted a three-run home run, which got the Hokies scoring really started. They got the one run in the first, but her big blast really was the catalyst for them from then, there on out. She's moved up from the nine hole to the eight hole in this game. So Coach Demore mixing the lineup up just a little bit after the offense production. Texas gathering on the field, the passing of Red McCombs earlier this week. So being honored, see the namesake, Red and Charlene McCombs field. Combs Business Field here at the University, Business School, excuse me, the field here. Moment of silence for Red McCombs. And now, fans, please join the horns on the field and be loud for the eyes of Texas. Red McCombs, known so well here at the University of Texas, known across the sporting world as well. San Antonio Spurs, the Minnesota Vikings, Denver Nuggets, all across professional sports, but the impact here at the University of Texas. Did you ever have a chance to re meet Red McCombs? I did get to meet Red McCombs um, a couple times, but obviously the field and his namesake. He also at one point in time commissioned um, an artist to do a couple paintings actually of myself pitching. I think it was after I broke the strikeout record, but. He was just so committed to everything that he put his name behind. And, you know, he knew what was going on here at the softball stadium. And, yeah, the few times I did get to meet him, he knew everything that was going on, every stat that was being broken and all those type of things. So it, we uh, here at Red and Charlie McCombs Field, obviously, great benefactors of his generosity. Wife Charlene had passed in 2019 with the namesake. for which these teams will play on the field today. Estelle Check be the pitcher in the circle, the lefty. 2.10 ERA for the junior from Downers Grove, Illinois. What will be her keys to success? Estelle Check's key to success is gonna be efficiency. A lot of times she'll get behind, she'll throw a lot of pitches. When she goes right at hitters, works ahead, which I sound like a broken record when you talk about pitchers, they all wanna work ahead, but when she really gets ahead and sets the tone, it allows her to loosen up a little bit and pitch freely. But she's gonna come from the left side, different look than what the Hokies saw earlier today. She's gonna sit about 64 to 66 
A lot of upspin, curve, backdoor, rise. Changeup is going to be the key as well. If she gets that off-speed pitch going, she's very hard to hit because she'll mix that in in almost any count. Started throwing a little bit of a drop ball last year. We haven't seen it a whole lot this season, but she does have that in her arsenal. Record actually 3-1 and one on the year. 1.40 ERA has pitched 20 innings. Fourth game started. She's gone the distance in two. Opponents hitting 2-0-3. Emma Ritter will lead things off. Ritter in foul territory. Grab made at second by Good for the up. Texas electing to go with the defense that they actually finished last weekend with. You'll notice that Mia Scott now in center field where last year she was at third base all season long. She was there for the beginning part of this season, but a couple of hot shots her way, errors that Coach White and Coach Singleton made some shifts. Move Mia Scott to the outfield, Alyssa Washington over to third, and you have the duo of Vivian Martinez and Leanne Good in the middle infield, two freshmen who were highly touted middle infielders coming into this year. Junior Cameron Fagan, second batter in the lineup, 353 hitter on the year, 12 hits, tied for third on the team. She really the lone batter that didn't get in on the Hit parade in game number one of the day for the Hokies. She was 0 for 3. Their 11 to nothing victory over Abilene Christian. Moved the Hokies to 8 and 3 on the season. Texas 8, 1, and 1. Missed the third weekend of the year. 55 degrees, slight breeze. Feels a little chillier than 55 though, especially as get later in the evening. It's been at 55 with, with no sun. The sun has not peaked out at all today. So I think that's where the chill a little bit more. Chet gets the strikeout, sits down Fagan. Chet coming out with the hot hand. She's using curve balls and rise balls. She's keeping these hokey hitters' eyes off balance, or eyes changing constantly. Hasn't had to use her off speed yet, but great job to retire the first two hitters quickly. Longhorns coming off last weekend's Texas Classic. Last game of that tournament was against UIW, an eight nothing run rule victory. So cat this very different in terms of opponent from what the Longhorns had seen last weekend. Yeah, different than what they saw last weekend, but opening weekend they did face quite a few ranked teams. They played Missouri. They were slated to play Tennessee. That game got rained out. Played Illinois, which is still checked through a complete game against. Finished up with a game against Kentucky and had a game against Northwestern in there as well. So they've already played some highly competitive games, just had a weekend in there where they didn't necessarily have a ranked opponent. Eddie Green, Jr. from Suffolk, Virginia. Green, a 345 hitter. 10 hits on the year. There's one for two, three runs batted in. Earlier today on the quick turnaround for the Hokies. Here, the fans grumbling, they wanted that strike three right there. Nice curveball offering by Estelle Check. Just a little off the plate, but great placement in 0-2 count on that pitch. There's the swing and the miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Estelle Check. Good start in the circle for the Burnt Orange. Introduce you to their hitting lineup. We come back to Austin. Texas head coach Mike White, who's made Super Regionals in all 13 seasons as a head coach, fifth season at Texas, coming off a phenomenal run to the Women's College World Series Championship Series, season in which Texas went 47-22-1, and 12-6 in Big 12 play, finishing third, putting it all together when it mattered the most. This is the hitting lineup for Texas. You chose Alyssa Washington to highlight. What? 
Well, you know, opening weekend, the story was the dynamic duo of Leanne Good and Vivian Martinez, who have still stayed hot, but Alyssa Washington last weekend first hit of the tournament was a home run, and that really sparked her offense, able to contribute in that three-hole a little bit more than she had the first weekend out. Texas really needing everyone to heat up, and Alyssa Washington did last weekend. In the circle, it will be the star for the Hokies. Emma Limley, the sophomore, already a four and one record on the young season. 2.33 ERA, five games started, gone the distance in five of them, 33 innings that she has pitched, opponents hitting 227. What makes her so effective, the sophomore from Forest, Virginia? Well, you know, she's a power pitcher, so she's gonna throw in the upper 60s. She has an elite rise ball. Hard charge into this ball, out to right. Ranging it was green. Did find it, albeit late, but good enough to make the grab. A good, good barrel there by Leanne Good, so a good start to the offense for Texas. But back to Emma Limley, she throws in the upper 60s. Has a good rise ball. They're working on a drop and change combo as a complement to that rise ball to change eyes. But she has great rise ball spin. Key to her is going to be being able to stair step that in and out of the zone. And Coach Demore talked about limiting the mistakes. The mistakes are what cost them in some of the big games they played last week in Clearwater. Being able to limit those balls over the plate. Scott putting a ball in the dirt and speeding down to first. We haven't seen a lot of this out of Mia Scott early yet this season, but using her bunt game and her speed to get herself on and down the line, beautiful bunt right here, catching third baseman Bennett sleeping just a little bit. But if I'm Virginia Tech, I'm going, Where? when have you shown that? Because she's been swinging away so much this season. Hasn't shown that short game, but it's definitely an asset for her. Lisa Washington swinging at the first pitch, deep out into left field, and that is gone! Second home run of the season for Alyssa Washington. The first two runs of the ball game, Texas off to a hot start. Texas wasting no time to get their swings off. This a rise ball, but over the plate, and Alyssa Washington, almost the same spot as she hit it last weekend, able to extend through that and the power that Lemley possesses. If you get the barrel to it, the ball's gonna fly, and Alyssa Washington puts the horns up, two nothing. Top of the show, we talked offensive prowess for both of these teams, and Alyssa Washington, Texas the first to strike. Washington second on the team in RBIs, getting her 14th and 15th. I think you think, the, see the big thing, Texas isn't getting deep in the count. Leanne Good hit the second pitch she saw, Mia Scott bunted the first one she saw, and Lisa Washington there, first pitch she saw as well. So they're not gonna let Lumley, Lemley, excuse me, get comfortable in the circle. They're gonna be the attackers right now, and that's paying off. Lemley's done it against high quality opponents against top 15 Arizona. She had a career high 17 strikeouts earlier this season. She deals to Courtney Day, the junior, 350 hitter. 21st at bat of the year, seven hits. One extra base hit, that was a home run. Does lead the team with six walks as she awaits the one, two. Interesting right there. Courtney Day's approach to Limley was completely different than the first three hitters. She actually took two strikes that were well in the zone and then chases that rise ball out of the zone. And you mentioned the 17 strikeouts that Limley got against Arizona. And she will, she will get her strikeout numbers. The key as an offense is being able to attack when you see it down in the zone. And also know that, you know what, let her, let her rack up her strikeouts but when we can, let's try to string them together. Don't get knocked off your mindset or just your confidence because she's gonna strike out her, she's gonna strike out people. You just have to be able to continue to battle off in between those strikeouts. 
Viviana Martinez taking that one foul, the freshman. 5-16 average so far, 32nd at bat, 16 hits, three doubles, one triple, six runs batted in. She awaits the pitch from the preseason All-ACC team member, Emma Ritter, excuse me, Emma Limley, Emma Ritter, it's her teammate, who was also to the preseason All-ACC team. See that drop ball by Limley that they're trying to work in to change the eyes a little bit. Limley was the ACC Freshman of the Year. Back up the middle, hard hit by Martinez. Two out single. Whatever Texas's game plan was, they are bought into this. Vivian Martinez takes this ball low and out, just up the middle. Texas swinging hard, really being aggressive in the box. When you get deep in account, forcing a pitcher to have to come back in the zone, Texas is going to be able to make them pay, just like the Hokies did in the first game. So it'll be interesting to see how this game progresses. Jordan Whitaker, junior from Jacksonville, Texas. Second game she started this season. Out of the 10 that Texas has played. Whitaker into this ball, out to left. But into the glove of Ritter. Not before though, Texas strikes first. Alyssa Washington, her second home run of the season. Alyssa Washington gave this one a ride and gave Texas the lead. Difference makers in the lineup, obviously a still check left-hander, has got the experience from last year, pitched really well in some big games for us, is able to move the ball at different speeds. We've got Sophia Simpson, who pitched that masterful game against Arkansas, I'm hoping she'll build off that one. Mac Morgan is going to have a lot of velocity down in the zones. Sitlati Gutierrez, I think she's going to turn a lot of heads this year. She has really impressed us. Obviously a freshman, so you just don't know until the lights turn on what's going to happen, but she's a kid that uh, really wants the ball and wants to go out there and pitch. So Coach White, probably the most qualified to talk about the Texas pitching staff. Kat, you're probably the second most qualified, maybe even more than Coach White. Tell us about the Texas pitching this year. Well, he's not wrong. They have a deep staff. Estelle Check earned some really big games last year, especially in the World Series, pitching against Oklahoma State, um, even coming in to close out that Arizona game. So she's experienced. She has some confidence. Mac Morgan transferred in in the offseason from Arizona State. She's a completely different look than anyone Coach White has had on his staff here at Texas. That so those two will start. There by Bailey to bloop on. So Jamie Bailey, the senior, one of the best hitters in the lineup, is on. Go ahead. Yeah, so those two will start. And then Sophia Simpson and Sitlali Gutierrez Mostly going to be relief, but we'll see them some spot starts as well. I was fortunate enough, I got to coach Sitlali Gutierrez this past summer before her coming into Texas, so really familiar with her, but I don't think he's wrong. I think she'll start to turn some heads, and I think over her time here at Texas, she'll really develop into another one of those pitchers that you hear a lot about. I only say Coach White because he spends every day with, with the pitchers. By no means would he be able to analyze the pitchers well, like was, you. He was a great pitcher in his own right in the men's game. So when you uh, talk about analyzing pitching, he's one of the best. I like the specs for Coach White. Beautiful down there, calling pitches. <laughs> Count 0-2. Stell check ahead of Bree Peck outside. She burns one with the count to one and two. Peck 364 hitter. 12 hits for the sophomore. Oh, 
about the 15th pitch of the contest for Estelle Check. She's only thrown three balls, so she's definitely attacking the strike zone, forcing the Hokies to swing. We've seen them chase a couple out of the zone. Big thing as the game goes on is if they adjust to swinging first pitch, will she adjust to mixing speeds or stretching the plate just a little bit? Bailey over on first. One, two pitch is fouled back. Pat continuing to waste pitches. Watched the backdoor curve for a ball, but fell off the curveball in. That's a rise ball up and in. Still check hitting some good spots right now, though. Seventh pitch of the at bat. Goes off speed. Move it to two and two. These are the type of matchups so good early in the season. It's one thing to go to a neutral site, play it. Fans come in, you can have a neutral crowd, but this very much having the feel of super regional. These two teams getting together. Fouled off. Well, both teams have to be able to test your pitchers and test your offense against elite arms against elite hitting in order to figure out where exactly you are, what needs to be worked on. This not a matchup that actually in the history of the Texas program we've seen too many times. But right now, pretty evenly matched, so a great opportunity for these two teams to battle it out head to head. Second meeting all time between the two. In fact, previous meeting, 3-2 victory for Texas that on February 24th of 2018. Texas Southern, Abilene Christian, the other two teams here. For a fuller slate of games, Kansas popping in for one. 10 games part of this Lone Star State Invitational. 2-2 two -two pitch, hard hit, right at short. Out is there, double play for the Texas defense. Well, after making quick work of the Hokies in the first inning, this was the 10th pitch of this at bat against Bree Peck. Nice line shot, but right at Vivian Martinez. Jamie Bailey taken off on contact, doubled up at first base. Big double play right there for Texas to eliminate any Virginia Tech threat. Yeah, you talk it in terms of a boxing match. Texas throwing the first punch, getting the first blow with the home run. But then another big momentum there is get the leadoff runner on, but Texas turning a double play. Well, a good battle right there between Estelle Check and Bree Peck. 10 pitches, Check kept trying to hit those corners. Peck wasted a few pitches. I think Coach White out to talk to check and Atwood about where our spot's good. Might have missed a pitch sign in there or something, but. Slow dribbler back to check. Texas looking good. Offense with the home run. Defense with the double play. 2-0. Texas takes their cuts in the second when we come back. ESPN.com, USA Softball, top 25, this one through 10. Oklahoma, I think surprised a lot of people taking that loss early on in the season. UCLA jumping up into first. Florida, Oklahoma State, Clemson one through five, but flip over to 11 and on, and that's where our two teams stand, Virginia. 12 in the country, Texas 13. You look across what's happening this week in the country, some really good matchups, Mary Nutter and whatnot, but we have a great one here. These two teams play twice this weekend. Yeah, these two teams are gonna battle it out. We see Emma Limley in, this, in the circle for the Hokies this game, their ace right now, but freshman Lindsey Grine will most likely see tomorrow to match up against what I would assume would be Mac Morgan for Texas. Two great matchups. Great offensive teams, but also great pitching teams. You talk about Lemley's 17 strikeouts against Arizona. Granted, in a loss, but still, that's a hard to do. So 
it'll be an interesting matchup in these two games. Reese Atwood beginning the second inning for Texas. Longhorns program mentioned, finished third in the Big 12, but then the pieces really coalesced all together. Did not get to play here at home to begin the NCAA tournament. Went on the road and charged their way through to the Women's College World Series Championship Series against Oklahoma for Virginia Tech. Finished first in the ACC. So no small feat in itself. Go 40 and six overall, 21 and two. Return eight starters from that team. Pick to finish second in the ACC behind Florida State, team that went 19 and five last year. But both these teams, no stranger to tough competition in their conferences. No, not at all. And you talk about Virginia Tech, and we talked about it early on. Coach Pete Demore said, you know, he feels like each year postseason is just an, a half a step better regionals than hosting regionals than it was making supers hosting supers there you see a big strikeout second of the game for Emma Lemley of Reese Atwood but they made supers then they hosted supers and so now hopefully he's hosting, hoping this year the next half step is okay we win in supers but you know they went head to head with a Florida team that got hot at the right time as well and that was a highly contested super regional Ashton Maloney, the batter for Texas. Offers at the first, and it's so easy for us to fall in the trap of thinking that progress is always linear, and you always add a piece to it. It doesn't always work out that way. So when you do have programs, teams that do that, it is so impressive. It's obviously all teams set out their goals and saying, hey, let's get one step further. Let's make that leap. That's something that Virginia Tech's been able to do You talk about Virginia Tech doing that, another team that's trying to do that, and it may not happen this year, but you hope it, you know, as a program, you hope it does. It's Clemson as well, you know, they they won, they made regionals, they made supers, and now the next goal is, hey, let's figure out how we get to the World Series. Now, granted, they didn't hope, host supers in between in there like the Hokies have, but it's a big deal, and you want to hope when you have certain classes of athletes that those athletes are able to build on what happened year the year before. And I think right now that's where Coach Pete Demore is. He has a good group of Bennett, Bailey, Slaw, and Chavez who have been with him since he started. And he wants those four to keep pushing the envelope to where hopefully they end up in OKC this year. One, two count. Lemley to Maloney. Lemley will field, relays the throw for out number two, and that's, to your point, Kat, why last year I think was so special for Texas when you talk about a Janae Jefferson and what she had meant to this program and the progression. Players talking about that, wanting to leave her and her to leave the program was something special. That's what they did. Yeah, she had done a great job of being able to try to help build Texas back into a perennial power and she said early in season, Coach White made it known, was like, let's figure out how to get Janae to Oklahoma City. And obviously Haley Dolcini transferred in to want to try to do that in her career as well. But it became an effort to not let one of the best players, oh, let's backtrack, to let the best position player ever here at Texas leave without be setting foot in Oklahoma City. I see what you did there. I like it. But I bring that up to say, this is a new era for, for Texas. This is my first time being up here and you look at a Texas team that doesn't add Janae Jefferson at the top of the lineup and for so long you could count on her. She came in and not only was consistent from her freshman year on, she did it progressively better every year on, but now you have that leadership void, that production void as well, and who those names are going to be. Is there a new Janae Jefferson? Is there a leader that can help push Texas and continue and build upon that success? I think one of the biggest storylines for Texas this season. Yeah, it'll be who fills those shoes, but right now you see Leanne Good at second base. Vivian Martinez was there up until two games ago. But those two freshmen have come in and almost made that filling of the shoes easy so far. Now, granted, there's a lot of season left, and there's usually some ups and downs to handle that they're both going to probably have to go through. But for right now, 
Texas has been solid in filling those shoes defensively behind the plate. Reese Atwood and Katie Simis have done a great job in Mary Iacopo's absence, who honestly was here for three years as well. Yeah. I think a lot of people forget that. You know, she started at Oregon, but with the COVID year, she spent plenty of time here on the 40 acres. Saw a lot of home runs come off of her bat, so that's another hole that Texas is going to have to be able to fill. Papelka awaiting the 3-1 pitch back up the middle to Limley again, who fields her position consecutive time. So all three outs coming off the arm of the pitcher Limley. 2-0 as we close the second. Well, you could smell the grills getting prepped and fired up in between our last game and this game. That's because there is a game across the street. Texas baseball hosting Indiana at the dish. Game one, 6.30 tonight. Game two tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the finale Sunday at noon. All of those here on LHN and ESPN app as well. I'm trying to think. I feel like they did it one year. But have they ever closed down Kamal Street just in the middle? They should just make it a big light. You know that how they do for football now? You know, yeah. and, and you have the concourse there, you know, on a, a weekend like this and just make it like a big fair. I know, you know last year, park. I don't know if they I don't think they closed down Kamal, but somewhere over here they had a joint like tailgate is what they called it, and they had, you know, the the blow up obstacle course and bouncy things. Bouncy castles. And, yeah. Hard hit ball out into center field. Scott ranging down to make the grab. Yeah, I'm putting that out there. Yeah, they did do a joint tailgate type atmosphere last year. I just don't remember exactly where it was housed. But it's always exciting when you have both baseball and softball going at the same time. Although personally, when I played, I liked when baseball wasn't here because the buses pulled over to our left field, so we got ah. to feel we got to feel important for a weekend. Well, see, and that's where you know you do that. You get the buses pulled over here, then you move them over there. The only thing missing right now is that good spring weather. It really goes well with the smell of the grill. And yeah, there's just not the same of the no. smell of hot dogs. And <laughs> no, not when it's 55 all of that when degrees. It's 55 degrees. Yeah, it feels more like a, a football tailgate. You're wanting to smell some hot chocolate brewing. Taking Trunk. Trunk, excuse me, the batter at the plate. Trunk, her first career home run earlier today, a three-run shot in the second inning. Take you back to that swing. Yeah, Trunk got down in the count, but then stayed up through this pitch just over the left center wall. It was a no-doubter off the bat. Followed that up with a single later in the game, an RBI single. Seeing the ball well. Began her career, first game as a Hokie, going three for three. One of seven freshmen. The challenging part right now for a lot of coaches across the country with your freshman class is you had this class committed. A lot of them really good, big accolades. Dunk hard hit. Short Martinez, long throw. Day trying to gather it first, cannot. Thrunk drives this one up the middle, but Vivian Martinez range. This is why she was ranked in the top three as an infielder coming into her college career. Throw, unfortunately, a little bit low. Courtney Day couldn't handle it. But back to my comment about the freshman classes, with COVID, you have so many leftover players. And so it's sometimes hard to be able to get your freshmen in and get them action, but Texas and Virginia Tech both able to get freshmen into their lineup that are making impacts. Pinch hitter coming in for Virginia Tech, nine hole hitter. Kylie Aldridge was slated. Grace Chavez will hit in her stead. 167 hitter on the year, seventh at bat of the season, has one hit. Swings at the first pitch. Make that hit number two and make it a home run to tie the ball game. What a pinch hit opportunity capitalized upon by Chavez. Chavez, one of those four players who have been with Coach Pete Demore since he got here to Virginia Tech. So he knows what to expect out of her. I'm assuming since they know where Estelle Check is starting most hitters that they had a game plan and know that that's a strength of hers. 
She takes that outside pitch for a ride to right field. So the Hokies respond to Washington's two-run home run with a two-run home run of their own. Grace Chavez as a pinch hitter. Turn the order back to the top in what is now a tie ball game. Coach Pete Moore was very optimistic and confident in his offense that they can go punch for punch with most teams in the country. So I'm sure he wasn't stressing a whole lot after the first two innings, just knowing his team had to settle in a little bit with the change of pitching between game one and game two. Another hard hit ball laced up the middle by Ritter. All-American last year is on. Well, Estelle Check was being successful early in the game, hitting her corners, mixing heights as far as low in the zone and high in the zone. Right now, she's in the middle of the plate and she's in the middle height-wise. You don't want to be in the middle height-wise. That is the easiest place for batters to get their barrel and both. The home run to Chavez was about belt high and that home run or that hit that Ritter just had up the middle was also belt high. When Jackson too, the first at bat of the inning, solid contact on that ball that was lined out to center and Scott. So some action up in the bullpen for Texas. Because after a little bit of time to analyze the pitching of Estelle check, as you mentioned, Virginia Tech seeing pitches they like and getting after it. Virginia Tech adopting a little bit of the same philosophy Texas had in the first inning. They're starting to hack on the first pitch. The, these two teams combined have seven hits, four of which are on first pitches of the at-bat. Yeah, we may be in for a 10-9 type affair. Well, and we saw the Hokies do that with Oklahoma State to lead off the Clearwater Tournament last weekend. Nine, eight or nine home runs combined between the two teams. But it went back and forth, and this Hokie offense knows what they possess, so I don't think there's very many pitchers that can make them doubt their ability to hang in any game. Talked as well for Estelle Check, the benefit of that high pressure postseason experience. And she should be leaning on that right now. She, you know, she's been able to go into the biggest stage and be successful. This type of offense, she can be successful against it. You just have to be able to make the adjustment when adversity hits. Fagan struck out first time up, is ahead 2-0. What's that like for a pitcher when you emerge on the other side of having played in a Women's College World Series and knowing what's at stake? How different are you afterwards? Well, I think you know what it takes to get there. So really your mindset shouldn't so much be about what just happened, but I know what it takes to get there. Let me repeat that or let me grow on that. But sometimes I think pitchers put so much pressure on them to repeat an outing that they think they have to tighten up and try to be pinpoint perfect. Well, you're never going to be perfect. So it's a matter of being good enough to win today, and what does that look like? Not forgetting what, what got you there, the consistency, the process. Right, and the buying into the process both on both sides of the ball is huge, and you hear a lot of coaches preach it, but it's a matter of as an athlete, you really have to buy into it, because some days you're gonna have your A stuff. A lot of times as a pitcher, you go to battle with your B, B plus stuff, and have to figure out how to be successful with that. 2-2, what does Check have here to Fagan? One runner on, goes outside, the runner goes. Throw is not in time, so swiping second does Ritter. This is the second stolen base of the tournament for Ritter. She gets a good jump, she's easily there. Vivian Martinez on the back of the bag not to have obstruction, but Ritter with a great jump. Count full. Check gets the strikeout third of the day. Here's the off-speed pitch that Estelle Check needs to find if she's going to be successful in this game for later innings. That pitch has to be in the strike zone to keep the Hokies timing off. She uses it right there against Cameron Fagan for a big second out. 
but Coach White needs to see that and utilize that from her more often against this powerful offense. A big bounce back. Conclusion to that at bat and one that went long and ends in a strikeout by check of Fagan. Green, one of those three strikeouts, her first time up. And Green chased that off-speed pitch in the first inning. Down in the, down in the dirt, the difference is going to be that Estelle Check has to prove that she can throw it for a strike if you're going to get the Hokies to chase it out of the zone the farther this game goes on. Good pop on that pitch. Green, a 267 hitter with two outs. 500 on the season with runners in scoring position. Cut. Moves the count to one and two in favor of Check. Nice placement on a rise ball right there from Estelle Check. Used a back door to get even, one and one, then went up from there. Has Green set up to either go farther up or possibly farther out. Went up. She went up. It didn't necessarily go higher. I think what she was, they were trying to set up, but she was in enough that Green couldn't get the barrel to it, so you get a foul ball. Count remains one and two. This ball out into right field in foul territory. Maloney there to make the grab for out number three, but Grace Chavez, her number called, comes in to pinch hit, two run home run. Speak with head coach Pete Demore when we come back as his team has tied this ball game up. Welcome back to Austin 2-2 ball game between two top 15 teams. Virginia Tech visiting the capital city and joined by their head coach Pete Demore and coach Emma Limley in the circle. What was the message to her and the game plan going up against a very explosive Texas offense? Yeah, I mean, just, just, just got to move the ball in the strike zone. You know, I think the first inning uh, a little bit flat. Um, but she's spinning it better and throwing a little bit harder. So I uh, just got to keep getting better throughout the game. Coach, tell us the secret about what you knew about Chavez <laughs> because she made you look like a genius. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sparky Anderson. Uh, she, Check is hard on left-handers, you know, and, and Grace uh, is a right-handed power hitter, and I thought um, maybe we could tie it up with one swing and ran into one. Show to she. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Coach, we appreciate the time. Thank you. How many in our young audience do you think got the Sparky Anderson reference? None. <laughs> Good stuff from Coach Damore. As a coach, you always love when those pinch hits pay off. You think you have a gut feeling, and then, like he said, we thought we could tie it up maybe with one swing, and it took one pitch, one swing, for her to do just that. Top of the order for Texas, and they're half of the third. It's a Texas team, one senior, seven juniors, seven sophomores, six freshman. Good one of those freshmen. Chops it off the ground and drunk. Fellow freshman ranging to her left couldn't glove the ball. Leanne Good just to bounce her up the middle on an outside pitch. I have to wonder if Emma Limley tipped that at all to change the spin, but Thrunk trying to pick that up. But the speed of good was going to make that play bang, bang. Scored as an air on the shortstop Thrunk. And it was a very tough play. But lead off on for Texas to begin the third. Bunt single for Mia Scott. Her first time up. You saw Bennett 
in a couple steps after Mia Scott dropped the bunt single in the first inning. Trying to play for Scott's speed. You know, Mia Scott, such a dynamic athlete, one that you would think would slide up into the leadoff spot with you mentioned the absence of Janae Jefferson now this year. However, Texas liked the production they had out of her in the two hole last year, said why mess with something when we have other athletes that can lead off and Leanne Good's been a very viable replacement there in the leadoff spot for Janae Jefferson getting herself on. Fast feed over there at first too for Leanne Good. Yeah. She does yeah. have four stolen bases, but keeping it. Now 11, 11 game on base streak for Leanne Good as a freshman. Pressure on the battery, Aldridge keeping her eye on Good. Big 12 hit leaders, top three, Leanne Good, 19, Mia Scott, 18. Martinez with 17. And Martinez was quietly doing work down in the bottom third of the lineup. Texas moving her up to the five hole today. Take the place of Katie Simmons, who's out this game. Base hit for Scott. Out to the track, the right fielder, Green bobbles it. Ranging around the speedy, Good scores. You were talking about Leanne Good's speed. Mia Scott mashes this ball that actually doesn't get to the wall, but the tiny bit of bobble and the speed of Leanne Good allows her to score the go-ahead run for the Texas Longhorns. Mia Scott working deep into the count in this at bat and taking that elevated pitch over the plate to the right center gap. Texas making the most of Emma Limley's mistakes right now. Scott with her fifth double of the season, that bringing home good and to crack the tie. Already Alyssa Washington with the home run, drop ball behind home by Aldridge. Pushes Scott to third, sliding in safely. Great read by there, there by Mia Scott on this ball in the dirt. Sees that it bobbles just far enough away, but she has tremendous speed. If there's one base runner in the country that trusts herself to advance on almost any ball in the dirt, it's probably Mia Scott. So after the wild pitch, Texas closer in scoring position, try to build on their one run advantage. 1-0 pitch. When talking about, you talked about Leanne Good leading off with the error, but having four stolen bases. Leanne Good runs as fast as most lefties you see in this game. A lot of times when athletes are younger, you possess speed, people flip you over to the left side, make you a slapper, then you have to learn how to hit on that side. Leanne Good, a right-handed hitter, but she possesses so much speed that you can't assume because she's on the right side that a ground ball or a ball in the outfield isn't extra bases. Leanne Good, one of the top 55 freshmen to know for D1 softball heading into this season. So Limley continuing to try to use that drop ball down in the zone. The only comment I would make is it never looks in the strike zone. From out of her hand, it looks low to lower, so I don't know that it's changing Texas's eyes too much as it never looks like a pitch that they have to offer at. Limley ready at 2-1. Ball high in foul territory over at first. Bailey takes it for the out. Got a big whiff of the grills we were talking about earlier. <laughs> How do you doctor your hot dog? Ketchup, mustard, onions. Oh, I That's hate it. onions, so. Oh, I like onions. Oh, but mo mainly only on my hot dog. Okay. I do a nice line of ketchup. You know, nice even lines, ketchup, mustard, boom. Gotcha. My mom, Chicago native, won't, uh, won't like the ketchup because you usually put relish and tomatoes on them. And I will eat them on occasion that way as well, but most of the time it's just easier to go ketchup, mustard, onion, especially at a ballpark, unless you're in Chicago where they offer you like the Chicago dog. Yeah. Would you prefer your onions diced or grilled? 
Ooh, both are good, but on my hot dog diced. Oh. On my hamburger grilled. <laughs> I did not think we would get into onion talk today. <laughs> I am a firm hater of onions. But even grilled onions? Everything. Oh. All onions. Can't do it. Texas with a quick conference. Courtney Day, batter in the box. What do you think the combo was? We know I think Courtney Day was a little passive in her first at bat when aggressiveness has been what has paid off for Texas. I think Coach White talking to her about what to look for. If she sees a pitch that she can put a swing on, let's not hesitate to try to drive the ball. Saw something she liked there, but just underneath. Yeah, Emma Lindley has great, a great rise ball, so the spin is going to be up. So I'm going to see Texas foul off a lot of pitches back. The key is making the adjustment to be able to stay on top of it as you see it more and more. Good eye there, Courtney Day making sure she sees that off the plate after she struck out, taking two strikes in her first at bat. Limley and Clearwater, 37 strikeouts across her 21 innings pitch, only walked two all weekend, two and one record. Day obviously did make the adjustment. Two run shot off the bat of Courtney Day. Texas's aggressiveness and they're ready for the upspin. This ball just over the middle part of the plate. Courtney Day expecting something out, stays inside it. Her power is something to be admired. This ball, a line shot right over that right center field fence. So Texas, five runs, all extra base hits. Alyssa Washington, the two run home run. The double from Mia Scott and the two run home run from Courtney Day. Five that Texas have through two and a third innings thus far off of a very good pitcher in Emma Limley. She's a very good pitcher and we've talked about it. She's gonna rack up strikeouts as games go on. But Coach Pete DeMore this week talked about trying to limit the, the mistakes. He talked about the Arizona State or the Arizona game specifically, the 17 strikeouts. But he said there were five or six mistake pitches that Arizona made her pay for, which is why that game wasn't a win. It wasn't a, in the win column. So he wants to limit those mistakes. Unfortunately, right now, she's had quite a few right against Texas, and they as well have made her pay. 250 feet, the home run by Day, her second of the season. Good response there, though, by Limling, staying down in the zone against Vivian Martinez, seeing a hole in the swing and just attacking that from pitch one. Two down, Jordan Whitaker in high. In the infield, the grab made by Thrunk at short, but Texas striking to the tune of three more runs to crack the tie. Five two ball game as we hit the fourth. That means speak with Texas head coach Mike White when we come back. Courtney Day, 250 feet, two run shot. Texas's second home run of the day. Top 15 matchup here in Austin, Texas. Three runs in the third inning, lead 5-2 over Virginia Tech. Texas head coach Mike White joining us. Take us through that conversation, Coach, with Courtney Day prior to the home run. Well, just making sure we didn't get after the pitch she wants, which is that uh, lowish outside pitch, and she went with it really well. So that was what we were looking for in that situation. Coach, talk about your conversation. You've gone out a couple times to talk to check the adjustments you're asking her to make, especially now that you guys are getting ready to go the third time through the lineup. Yeah, you trying to get her back to focusing on the present. Sometimes she gets ahead of herself and carries the last pitch with her. You know, that home run was a you know a mistake. Um, so she kind of carries it with her sometimes, just making sure she's back in the present. Coach, we appreciate the time. Can you turn up the heat, though? <laughs> it's hot in here. We got heaters on. We're good. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Coach. I, I don't know if the, the temperature gauge is broken because it's been just holding steady at 55 on the center field scoreboard. I'm not buying it. I know. I feel like it's dropped a little bit since the beginning of the first game. but. Yeah. 
55 feels like 48. What'd you take away from what we heard from coach? Well, you know, a lot of conversations about making adjustments. And, you know, we said Courtney Day watched the outside pitch her first at bat, and that's a pitch she is good at driving. So obviously, Coach White making sure she's attentive to seeing the outer half. And Estelle Check, he's not wrong. There's a lot of times a walk, a big hit, they, it starts to snowball a little bit and get themselves in jams. So trying to get her to just stay pitch to pitch and be able to compete one pitch at a time and not worry about it. You know, you give up a home run, you hate to say so what, but in this in this atmosphere, you have to say so what and go right back to work. Four, five, six due up in this half of the inning for Virginia Tech. Begins with Jamie Bailey. Be over the first. And there have been some changes. That's where Leanne Good is now for Texas, staying in the infield. Viviana Martinez goes to second. So Alyssa Washington to short. Mia Scott coming from center down to third base. And Bella Dayton will take Mia Scott's spot in center field. Well, that's the big story right there. That whole move is made because Bella Dayton has now been released to actually start to play. We saw her pinch running for the first two weekends with a big cast, or I should say brace on her arm that was then padded, so that way made sure no more damage was done. She had a wrist injury in the fall that non-surgical methods didn't help fix, so they had surgery and we're waiting for her to get released. Don't know if we'll see her in the box at all, but she is allowed to play defense, so Texas going with a more solid outfield with three true outfielders and the versatility of good allows them to slide Scott and everybody else over a, sp a spot. And the junior Bella Dayton from Wiley, Texas, but began her career at Arizona. Martinez take the highest skyer in to her glove for out number two. Coach White talking about the conversation with Check about staying in the now, make the adjustments, let's limit the mistakes. She's really gone to quick work, and she had quick work in the first two and second. Quicker work, but had a, a long first at bat. But when she can get in a groove, work quickly, attack the strike zone quickly, which forces hitters to swing, she's way more effective. The chess match, we've seen it. The adjustments Virginia Tech made to Estelle Check, and now what Texas does. Bennett grounded out to check her first time up. This ball is playable, grabbed by Good. One, two, three, inning four, Stell check. And the Texas defense leading three, nothing here in Austin. Well, if this is your first time, maybe watching Texas softball, some new names, new faces, to get acquainted with the new era. To usher in the success, ranked 12th by extra inning softball, the recruiting class. And let's focus on Reese Atwood, who will begin this inning at the plate. You talk for Texas, that lineage of catchers across the years. But going back to just last year, Mary Iacopa, one of the best defensive catchers in the country, one of the best leaders in the country, I would put out there, and was, was no slouch at the plate either hitting-wise. How do they replace her? You know, defensively, Reese Atwood's the answer. She was the number one ranked catcher coming in to college this year. And defensively, she's already shown that. She has a great snap throw to first base. She has a great arm getting, getting catching runners, stealing. The question is going to be offensively, can she handle the ups and downs of a season and adjust to the pitching at this level? But defensively, they have a great one with her behind the plate. And, you know, she switches back and forth with Katie Simmons. So... Both of them give Texas good options, but I think when you talk long run, Reese Atwood defensively is going to be the answer. Limley back out into the circle. 50 pitches. I think you talked that freshman recruiting class as well. We mentioned fifth year for Mike White, but it really feels like firmly now this is Mike White's program, you, you've gotten all those transfers that came with him from Oregon. They've now matriculated onward, but you're really starting to see, hey, what type of coach he is, how he recruits, the type of player that he wants, the talent he can bring in. He's this dribbler, too short, drunk there. But the success is, has obviously been there. The consistency, the breakthrough last year, but now firmly, hey, here's what we're gonna bring in. This is what the program standard is. Yeah, well, now every, every athlete on this roster is his athlete. There are no, leftover athletes from Coach Clark's era. 
they've all graduated. So this is his program now as far as every person on this roster is someone they recruited, they brought in. And you can start to see where the pieces are getting put together. And we mentioned it, COVID changes things a little bit because as you mentioned, there's only one senior on this roster. Yeah. So other than Lou Gilbert, this entire roster is going to return next year, plus the athletes they just signed for the 2023 recruiting class. And they, they have another high-ranked class coming in. So it's a matter of putting who's hot together. But at the same time, you start to see their philosophies develop and the buy-in become even greater with each each year that you progress within your tenure at a program. Yeah, this school year going back to sports in the fall and then this spring really feels like the first back to normal post-pandemic, post-COVID, the matriculation, the rosters, the extra years that players had gotten. You see the roster breakdown as mentioned. Across all sports, I go to say that. So a relative sense of normalcy, new normal. That ball bouncing in the glove of Bennett over at third and safe at first is Maloney. You know, Ashton Maloney is one of these freshmen that are overlooked because she's a red shirt, shirt freshman, but she's been able to use her speed and get on base so much this season. That little bobble right there by Bennett allows her to be safe. We have to remember as commentators and if you're Longhorn fans she goes down with that freshman class now she will be with that freshman class for the next four years so you talk about Leanne Good and Vivian Martinez output Ashton Maloney her output is just as good down there in the bottom of the lineup Texas down to the bottom with Papelka rounded out back to the pitcher Lemley it was an air credited to Bennett over at third that put Maloney on but over to first will challenge Bailey, who cannot get there in time. Papelka taking a wide arc to get into first. Papelka does a great job of reading the defense here. Fagan is shifted over to cover the steal. This ball over the plate. So she takes it with her, knowing that if Bailey has to go into that 3-4 hole, the race is on, and Papelka betting on her own speed there. Great piece of slapping right there and barrel control by Alyssa Papelka. Sixth hit of the ball game for Texas to the four for Virginia Tech. Longhorns turn the order back to the top and Good, you'd mentioned, had already continued that reach base safely. So on base, 11. Yeah, the freshman broke Janae Jefferson's Hit streak for a freshman. Janae had eight consecutive games in a row to start off her freshman year. Leanne Good, 10. Looking for her first hit tonight. If she can get one, she'll extend that to 11. But at worst case, she has an 11 game on base streak going. After the game you mentioned, she became the first freshman program history to begin their Texas softball career with a double digit hitting streak. Ritter in left, will watch that ball into her glove for out number two. Bunt single and a double for Mia Scott has scored both times. Double did bring home a run. Pushed Scott's average to an even 500. Slugging at a 7-11 clip. Hitting 560 with runners on and 900 with two outs. And Mia Scott has steadily been continuing the work that she put in as a freshman. Last five at bats of this season have been all been hit, so she's five of five. But the focus has been on what Good, Leanne Good and Vivian Martinez have been doing. And meanwhile, Mia Scott sits in the two hole and just continues to be steady and come through in the big situations. Ah! 
This is a big opportunity for Texas to try to build on their lead. Two in the first, three in the third. Two on with two outs, two one pitch is foul. That back towards the baseball tailgaters. The buses out there on look Canal Street. Look alive. They better be careful. I haven't seen the bleachers. This is my first time seeing the bleachers added to center and right field. A couple bundled up fans out there. They await the 2 2 pitch. Two on, two out, out to left. Ritter there to make the grab for out number three. Texas leaves two on, but they lead by three. To the fifth we go when we come back to Austin. We build this as an offensive showdown, and Texas has lived up to the hype. Two two-run home runs, Alyssa Washington with one, Courtney Day with the other. Yeah, Texas really making the most of opportunities when they have runners on base. Left one on in the first and two on there in the fourth, but for the most part have been cashing in when they're on base. And we see that 5-2 lead. Leading off for Virginia Tech in the top of the fifth, designated player number 14, Emma Jackson. So a three-run advantage as we hit the fifth. Estelle Check remains in the circle for Texas. Has thrown 48 pitches. Bottom part of the lineup, though, is where Estelle Check had her little hiccup in the third inning, giving up the two-run home run to Chavez after Tegan Prunk was able to get on base. It's a top 15 matchup, top 10 matchup. If you cut it in some polls, you look across, or any polls out there, but once we look at top 15, so a very good, true road contest for Virginia Tech and welcoming in a very quality opponent, ACC champs last year to the Texas Longhorns is Scott to good for out number one. Well, and as you see in the, the rankings, 12 and 13, they're right there neck and neck, but at the same time you look on paper and these teams are just so evenly matched up. When you talk about pitching circle, you have Emma Limley and Lindsey Grind for Virginia Tech in the circle, Estelle Check, Mac Morgan for Texas is their two starters. And then just offensively, what they're able to do. Virginia Tech with a few more home runs than Texas has, but Texas able to put up runs in so many different ways that it allows their offense to be a little bit more dynamic. You don't see Virginia Tech use a whole lot of small ball the way you can see Texas do from time to time. Thrunk building on a great start to her career Mentioned first home run earlier today in a single to begin this game. This is her second at bat. Now three of her last four at bats have been extremely aggressive. If I'm Texas, I'm taking note of that. Trying to use that off speed pitch if you can early in the count. Come in too and always impressive, in my opinion too. Start at shortstop as a freshman. Shows you what the coaches think about. Throng. Yeah, but so many of these athletes are coming into these top 25 schools with such a high ranking as a recruit that you know the athlete you're getting, as long as they can handle the adjustment to the pitching that they face, then a lot of times you're gonna take your chances and let them grow in that spot as a starter. So that way, if not maybe their freshman year, but their sophomore year, they're ready to go and you get three really solid years. And if you get a great freshman year out of them, you're even more excited. Two pitch number 58 of the day for Estelle Check. 
on the ground, ranging to her right. Washington can't get there in time. So Thronk, two times up, two hits. I'm not sure if she'll be in the eight hole for much longer. I don't know. I would think it, it's going to be a challenge for Coach Pete DeMore to figure out if he can continue to move her up because, yeah, she's had some really good at-bats today. As I said, the first game she's in the nine hole, two of her three at-bats were extremely aggressive with her home run and her single. Now two for two off of the Estelle check. Four for four day right now for Thrunk. First at bat for Kylie Aldridge. It was Pete Sparky Anderson Demore that decided to pitch pinch hit Grace Chavez in the spot of Aldridge. First time through the order, and Chavez delivered the faith of her coach with a two-run home run. First pitch to home run pit home run hit too. But Coach Demore talking about the lefty on lefty matchup that Estelle Check has right now with Kylie Aldridge typically favors the left-handed pitcher. And he probably knows Aldrich and her tendencies more to mix it up and put a righty in there right from the get-go. It's a brave batter, especially today going out there. No gloves. No batting gloves on her, that's for sure. And a little bit of a split grip. One, two. Check with three strikeouts on the day. Make it number four. Nice placement on this curveball. Check not trying to do too much. Elevated the eyes a little bit, but came back down in at the knees. Great job by Reese Atwood, too, making sure she squares that pitch up between her shoulders. But Check hammering the lower part of the zone right now. First pitch swung on into the glove, over at third, the swipe by Scott, and makes the throw for out number three. A little bit of defense from Texas. Longhorns protecting that. Whenever I was younger, I didn't really want to get into sports, but my aunt was a really good softball fan. Like she loved Kat Osterman. And so when my aunt wanted to start a 6 u team, she wanted me to come play with her. And I was like, absolutely not. I don't even know what softball is. And we had went to the store and I had saw these new Hershey's cookies and creams bar. And I had asked her for one and she was like, no, like, no. She always said like, no, whenever I would ask for candy. She was like, oh, come on. Like, I'll give you one of the Hershey cookies and cream bar. And I was like, okay, you got me there. And so I went to the practice. I loved it. So what I gather from that is we can thank Hershey's cookies and cream. We can also thank you, Kat Osterman, for why Alyssa Washington is down here playing today. I guess if I have some hand in it, I'll take some credit. She's a hitter and a shortstop, so I don't know how much credit I could take. Usually it's inspiring people to be a pitcher, but yeah, her, her aunt's love for softball and I think bribing any little kid with candy usually works. <laughs> I'm sure though, not the first time as Washington puts the ball into foul territory. Does secure the catch, ranging deep into foul territory, Bailey. like maybe some contact with the wall from the second baseman, Fagan. Both athletes giving chase, but Fagan just getting a little caught up there on the turf as she tried to avoid running full speed into Bailey. You see how she kind of overstretches that left leg. I wouldn't be surprised if that groin or that hip hurts just a little bit. But good effort by all three Hokies there, Fagan, Bailey, and Green, trying to track, track down that fly ball to get the first out. Great catch by Jamie Bailey. Kit Washington. This looks like Fagan all good back at second. I was going to say though, I'm sure not the first time and probably very always very cool for you when somebody comes up and says, hey, you're the reason why I got into playing softball. It's really cool, and I think that coupled with when you have a lot of times you'll have dads of athletes or even guys that were in college when I was playing 
but they'll say that they were the re you know I was the reason they started watching or they got interested in it. And now they're hooked, and it's fun to just know that now they're hooked and they're continuing to watch on every platform that softball has broadcast because obviously that has grown immensely since I was in school. But yeah, it's it's a fun a fun compliment. Starting to get a little less and less. Not as many of these athletes were born when I was playing. Day on the ground is short, drunk. But we'll make sure we keep <laughs> the legend. My favorite, I coached six years down at Texas State and one of the first Second summers eight, we had eight. camp. They have, you know, the, the really young kids camp and I wasn't working that one, but Coach Woodard had asked if I would come up to, at the end and, you know, take pictures and autographs because some of the kids were asking and this one kid walked up and goes, I don't know who you are, but my mom said I need to get your autograph. <laughs> probably better than if you ever had a player that you were trying to coach and said, well, what do you know? Right? Who are you? <laughs> what does she know about pitching? Viviana Martinez. One of those youngsters for Texas making the splash early on in her career. Does have one of Texas's hits today, so continuing her hot hitting as well. First time up. Texas two in the first, showed you the two run shot off the bat of Washington. Then Lemley controlled the second going one, two, three. The strikeout looking and two ground outs back to her, but Longhorns get three more after Good got on via an air. Double from Scott, then the two run shot from Day. Since then, Texas. Nine batters, one hit sprinkled in there. Papelka with the single in the fourth. But really goes to that narrative is this ball hard hit out to left. Ritter making the grab that you were talking about. Just those few mistakes, one or two there for Limley and Virginia Tech, the difference in their record right now. Can they cut into their three run deficit? Two frames remain. Old Trapper B. Texas giving a stealth check, the nod in this top 15 matchup and she has been stellar. She has four strikeouts on the day. We've seen her go up, we've seen her use her off speed, go low and out, mixing in seven fly balls, three ground outs. One little hiccup in the third inning, a two run home run, but for the most part, Estelle Check has been in control. Two more frames for the Hokies to see if they can catch up. But Estelle Check still standing in their way. Right now, advantage Texas 5-2 in this top 15 matchup. Two season NCAA teams from last year returning pieces. More would say so for Virginia Tech. But obviously missing some big pieces as well from their team last year and their success over the last handful of years. Yeah, one big piece for them is in the pitching circle. Keely Rochard was the ace pitcher and talking to Pete Demore about this team and the identity and who's who's stepping into leadership roles. And he said, you know what? The, the graduation of Keely is good because the whole team now knows this is their team. And Keeley's not coming in in the fifth inning of games to keep it close or bail them out. And they're really having to pull together. And so far, they're figuring that piece out. Showed you Stell Check continues to protect that Texas lead. Yeah, Stell Check makes quick work of Cameron Fagan here. Rise ball inside, keeps that Titan in. Such a pretty pitch. That's how rise balls should be used. A lot of times pitchers get in this habit of being of throwing it over the plate because they get away with it at a younger age. You're not going to get away with it against good hitters. Stell Check making sure that was tight to Fagan. Big cut, good pitch from Check to begin the at bat to Green. Five strikeouts. 
across the 67 pitches. 20 batters face prior to this. Right into the glove. Good over at first for out number two. Still check making quick work of these two left-handed hitters. Coach DeMore mentioned it. That's why he pinch hit early in the game for a righty is that it's hard on the, his lefties to face left-handed hitter li or pitcher like Estelle Check. That ball probably hit a little bit harder than she'd like, but that's why you have defensive players in position. It was a pretty off-speed pitch by Estelle Check. Saw the second strikeout in her package with that changeup. But her, she's starting to throw it in the strike zone early in the count against the Hokies right now. Take away that third inning. One, two, three in the first. One, two, three in the second. Then the third where the runs came. One, two, three in the fourth. Four batters faced in the fifth. Chance to go one, two, three here. Shift was on. And indeed, defensively, one, two, three, seven pitch inning. Texas. Leading by three. Five two ball game as we hit the bottom of the sixth inning. Number 13, Texas. Number 12, Virginia Tech. Emma Lemley was in the circle to start this ball game, remains out there. Mentioned her success for Virginia Tech last year. New Texas would be facing a good one. You see the strikeout numbers across games this season, but Texas fan just three times. Yeah, Emma Limley used, used to striking out high numbers, but Texas attacking early in the count, so she's not, they're not able to rack up as many today, only three. Has an inning here to try to keep Texas off the board, but I think it's Texas's game plan that has really limited her ability to stretch the strike zone because they're attacking so early in the count. First plate appearance of the season for Bella Dayton. You had mentioned that. We saw her inserted into center field, the trickle down effect for Texas defensively. But the question, would we see her at the plate? Answer. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to see her at the plate. A lot of times you get released to one phase of the game at a time. So pinch running was last or the first two weekends defense. But here we see her in the box, see if she can make something happen. Ranging up high was Lemley to glove that ball in and does in time to get Dayton. Lemley does a good job fielding that. If that ball is a little bit higher and is over Lemley, Bella Dayton's safe. So I think Lemley was up as high as she could go. Yeah, and she's a fairly tall pitcher, so some of the shorter pitchers that might have been over, but a good first at bat for Bella Dayton. Atwood swings at the first offering. Go for two. Struck out looking first time up. One six three. In the fourth. Hokies will have one more frame. Try to score three or more. Texas trying to pad that lead. See, we'll play again tomorrow, four o'clock. Hopefully under sunnier skies. Part of a trio of games coming your way. Start things off tomorrow, 10 a.m. Texas Southern. It's our first look at Texas Southern who they were victorious earlier today against Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian then turned around quickly to play Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech winning that one, 11-0. Run rule victory. And then turning around to play this game. Texas just won today. Yeah, Texas Southern did a good job bouncing back in that first game. Abilene Christian took a 2-0 lead without recording a hit. Took that into the fifth inning and then Texas Southern able to bounce back. Laced out to right, Atwood. First hit of the ball game. Lemley trying to use her off-speed pitch here. 
on the outer half. Not a bad location, just a little bit too much plate. Was down in the zone. But Reese Atwood able to drive that. A good cutoff by Green. That ball gets to the fence. Atwood might stretch that into two, but Pokey outfielders have done a good job of not letting too many balls get to the wall. Lou Gilbert coming in to pinch run. Vanessa Caroga coming in to pinch hit. Six at bat of the season for Caroga. Just two hits. Three runs batted in, one home run. We saw her last weekend get her first career home run here at McCombs Field. Straight away center field too, the deepest part of the park. Okay, we'll go from Corpus Christi, Texas. One of those seven sophomores. Up high. That's the first real rise ball higher in the zone that we've seen Limley be able to throw because she's ahead in the count. That pitch has so much movement on it, and you see it more when it's up in the zone. Lower rise balls, just to the naked eye, you don't see it jump as much. But that ball had a lot of movement. Good stretch of the zone right there by Limley. Tries to do it again. I would think if she stayed inside, she might have got Kiroga to swing twice in a row. Outside rise ball is easier for hitters to pick up. A lot of times we talk about if it's not high enough, also easier for their bat to run into. But when it's away from them, it's easier for them to lay off of, in my opinion. 2-2, two, two, one on. Strikeout from Limley. Another rise ball again outside. This one a little bit lower in the zone, but Kiroga taking a powerful swing and way behind that offering from Lindley. So can Lindley keep it at 5-2 and turn it to the bats of the Hokies in the top of the seventh? Here in day number one of the Lone Star State Invitational. When we've seen both of these teams are capable of putting up multiple runs at a time. So for the Hokies, they're hoping Texas doesn't add on to their lead. Texas gonna have to go to work to keep runners off base. Pelka trying to keep that one close and in play, but Scurry's foul. Papelka trying to use her short game, let her and Lou Gilbert run, pass the bat to Leanne Good. Texas with the live organ player. It's a new addition too. 0-2, two, two down, one on. Over at first is Gilbert. Papelka chops it back. You say that and then someone's going to tweet that there was no real live organ when they showed up here. Yeah, there's no live organ player that we know of. And maybe in the vacated locker room area that you talked about, maybe that's... There might be one over there. Fans bundled up. It has dropped. It says 53 degrees now. Runner going throw from the catcher. Aldridge not in time, so in scoring position is the pinch runner, Gilbert. Good opportunity there for Texas to sneak in a stolen base. Knowing that anything down in the zone, Aldridge is gonna have to try to frame, so this pitch down in the zone, good jump by Gilbert. Throw a little bit wide, but good jump by Lou Gilbert there to get herself in scoring position. One, two to Papelka. 
Back up the middle on the ground, fielded by Fagan. Out number three, three outs remain for Virginia Tech. Three is the deficit. They have to make up to the seventh inning. We go. Got some Texas baseball coming your way. A three game set against Indiana kicks off tonight. Game one, 6.30 Central. Game two tomorrow at 1 p.m. And the finale Sunday will be at noon. All of those here on Longhorn Network on the ESPN app. So that'll be sprinkled in amongst our full slate of softball. Aaron Miller will join us. Will join me. Be me and you, and then me and Aaron across the course of the rest of the weekend. Three games coming your way softball-wise. Tomorrow starts at 10 a.m., then 4 p.m., then 6.30. And then on Sunday, bright and early, 9.30. And then 3 o'clock, these two teams will rematch tomorrow. 4 o'clock, get things started. Texas Southern, Virginia Tech. Tomorrow, Hokies, 5, 6, 7, Peck, Bennett, Jackson, Slated to bat here. Texas with a stell check. Trying to shut things down. Ball bounces up high off of Mia Scott. So a good start for Virginia Tech. Well, Peck has really been barreling up balls today. She had a leadoff double in the first game. Had a line drive right at Vivian Martinez for a double play in the second inning here today. That hot shot right at Mia Scott but unable to handle that. Peck reaches on an air. Bennett grounded out back to check in the second inning, flew out to first in the fourth. Hard hit ball out to left field. Two run shot. Bennett delivers. One run ball game. This is a good player, Emma Jackson. This pitch supposed to be a curveball inside to Kelsey Bennett but check does not get it in enough, and it's about belt high. We already know that if it's up in the zone, the Hokies can hit it hard. That pitch right in the heart of the strike zone, and Kelsey Bennett makes Estelle check pay. If you give the Hokies life, they don't give up, and that first, that leadoff out was, would have been so huge in that situation for the Longhorns, but allowing the Hokies to still have some breathing room. So now how does Czech recover for the Hokies? How do they continue the momentum to either tie up or take the lead? Well, still Czech needs to settle down. That home run, you still have a one run ball game. You're still winning, but you see right there, she overthrew that pitch a little bit. That was not a pitch that Mike I asked to be over Jackson's head. But Jackson trying to be just as aggressive with strikes at still Czech's throws, swung at it. Quickly down, 0 and 2. Making sure our coach stays warm over there. Key is movement. Yeah. Just keeping him on his toes. <clears throat> Outside of the interviews, Coach DeMores had the hoodie up on his head. You would think he'd be used to chilly weather. I assume they traveled with beanies as well. You know. Maybe he doesn't think he looks as good in a beanie as he does in his hat and hood. Young man in the back enjoying a snack in what's now became a very interesting contest. So keep your eyes on the field, young man. <laughs> I 
I'm not sure what that is. A muffin, a donut. Who knows? But bagel. That's, uh, that's Stephen Singleton the third down there in the bullpen. Associate head coach, Texas. Hard hit ball. That will tie the ball game. Back to back home runs for Virginia Tech, and we are knotted up at five apiece. This is where Coach White said in his interview, sometimes Estelle Check can't get back into the now and stay in the present. She's ahead of Emma Jackson in this at bat. That pitch supposed to be inside. I'm going to assume it was supposed to be up the way her finish is, but that is just too good of a pitch to Emma Jackson in that count and in this situation. And Kat, it was, I, I had said, First inning, one, two, three. Second inning, one, two, three. The third inning was some trouble, but then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, all one, two, three outside of a fourth batter in the fifth, and she was cruising right along. This inning begins an air over at third from Mia Scott. It was a hard hit ball, but the air charged in a two run home run off the bat of Bennett. Solo shot from Jackson. Three runs for Virginia Tech and no outs on the board. And you have one of their hottest bats in the lineup. Tegan Thrunk already has a home run today, not in this contest, in their game earlier today, but is a perfect two for two. Well, I think you saw in the first three hitters, one, we didn't see any off-speed pitches, so there were no speed changes to the Hokies hitters. And at the same time, two pitches that weren't executed were hit hard out. And if you're going to talk about mistakes, both of these teams can hit mistakes hard. You can't make them this late in the game. Softly out to center. Dayton looked pretty good on her wheels there. Make the grab. Yeah, Texas is going to be excited to see Bella Dayton back in the outfield. Once she's in the, the lineup consistently as well, she's a very competitive hitter. But just the range and the speed she has in the outfield is going to be an asset. And really throws another piece of the puzzle in here as Mia Scott was playing out there. The ability that Texas has to be able to move their defense around. So big out and getting Thrunk to sit down. Aldridge. Second plate appearance, struck out looking. First time up in the fifth. Order turns around to the top after Aldridge. Good corner right there. Estelle check, just needs to take a deep breath, go right back to work. You have to really have short term memory as a pitcher. You can't keep holding on to what happened before. And I think sometimes Estelle check. Just has a little bit, takes a little bit longer to let go of her mistakes than other pitchers. Another hard hit ball into the outfield. Maloney all the way back on the track. Makes the catch for a loud fly ball out. You have to tip your hat. The Hokies aren't going quietly. They're taking their hacks, making things happen. That another deep fly ball. Some action in the pen. Gutierrez, number 77 on the right. Simpson, 99 on the left for Texas. But the damage has been done off the bats of the Hokies. An error to begin the inning, a two-run home run from Bennett. Solo shot from Jackson at the three runs they needed to stay alive. We will have a pitching change. New pitcher in the circle for Texas when we come back. So what was looking like a great day for Estelle Check, six and two thirds was really cruising along, but gets to the seventh inning and will sit down with a five-five tie ball game. Cat, what happened there in the seventh? Yeah, she came into the seventh just needing three outs to secure a five-three win for the Longhorns. Unfortunately, error on a hard hit by Bree Peck or a hard ground ball by Bree Peck, but. Follows that up and just lost her control a little bit. She was hitting some good spots, staying low in the zone. Started getting the ball elevated, and when the ball's elevated, both of these offenses love to explode, and the Hokies exploded for two home runs. She did retire two hitters, but Coach White going for a righty-righty matchup right here with Gutierrez as opposed to check the lefty-righty matchup. 
Saw the numbers for us. Hit Lolly Gutierrez, 2.69 ERA. Stone 13 innings. First batter she faces, one of the most distinguished players in the ACC. Emma Ritter does have a single on the contest. Big situation for here for Sitlali Gutierrez. Just a freshman, did get her first start against Northwestern, a ranked opponent. High situation against an offense like Virginia Tech. A huge situation. Ritter, one of the toughest last year to strike out. Only did such six times. First in the ACC, 12th nationally as the toughest to strike out. Was third in the ACC in stolen bases as well. Named to USA Softball's top 50 watch list. Scott able to get the out. Texas, can they walk it off? Hokies did what they needed, scored the three, five, five. We head to the bottom of seven. So Bree Peck gets on to begin the top of the seventh BN. Air, a two run shot by Kelsey Bennett and then Emma Jackson with a solo home run herself. The three runs Virginia Tech needed to stay alive. Texas, though, has a chance to walk it off. We knew that the Hokies were a hard-hitting, home run-hitting team, and that came to fruition in the seventh. Chase Estelle check, who was having a great day. Emma Limley. Top of the order for Texas. So Leanne Good flew out to right, then reached VN Air and flew out to left. Leanne Good getting a chance here. Fourth time to see Limley make an adjustment. The plus for Texas is they are at the top of their lineup. has a 10 game hit streak going and not sure what the other 10 are. I haven't watched every Texas game, but I'm sure that were she to get one here, it would be at a pretty important moment. Could she set the table and potentially be the game winning run? Good! Out to left field, out number one into the glove of Ritter. I think we have a, a tale of two different pitchers here. You talk about Estelle Check was cruising along and then that seventh inning in the top of the seventh here, the Hokies strike for three runs. Emma Limley gave up five in the first third and then she's actually settled down, started to be able to use her off speed, a little bit better spots against this Longhorn lineup. This is where the power is really cranked up for Texas today. Two, three, four. Mia Scott. Talked the versatility of her and her bat at the plate. We saw that bunt single in the first, but then that hard hit double in the third. But it was Washington with the two run home run, Day with the two run home run. So Texas needs just one. These are their big hitting bats. Yeah, they just need their ta a table setter to get on to pass the bat down to those two. sometimes too here, mind of a hit or put the pressure on the pitcher to throw strikes. Yeah, well, and right now you need base runners. So being aggressive is great if the ball is exactly where you're looking for it, but otherwise force her to come in the zone. On the ground to short, thrunk backs up to get it into her glove, two up, two down. The key to me that Limley is starting to settle in too is that Texas's outs have been less hard, less loud. There's starting to be some easy ground balls, some easy fly balls in there. So Limley letting her speed, her spin work, not trying to overthrow it too much. 
but staring at possibly an eighth inning here with Alyssa Washington in the box. Two run home run was in the first inning. Texas's first runs of the day. This was the swing. Pitch up in the zone and over the plate. Almost identical to her first home run of the season last weekend. Another up and in pitch that she took down or out in left field. It's that pitch right there. Emma Limley is getting ahead of these hitters with that outside corner, then occasionally using her dropper change, which now have elevated into just into the zone just enough, getting Texas ahead of it just a little bit. We saw Leanne Good pull an outside pitch to left field, but Texas needs to hone in on that low outside strike that she's able to throw right now. Next pitch will bring her to the century mark. 68 strikes, 31 balls for Lemley. Two one. Good eye there by Washington. Waiting out Limley. Four. And the winning run on first base. Courtney Day's two run shot came in the third. It was a conversation like this that we talked to Coach Mike White about and how to attack Limley. It was after a strikeout that she came back and did this. Well, she struck out on the outer half, and so Virginia Tech stayed out there, but Coach White reminding her that's a pitch she knows how to hit and hit hard, so she drives that over the right field wall. The question here is now that she's hit that out, you know Virginia Tech's not going to stay out there. So at what point do you focus on the outer half versus the inner half, and what pitch is she going to be looking for? A lot of the inside strikes to right-handed hitters have been up in the this season 308 with runners on 333 with two outs first pitch of the at bat Have to imagine two conversation with from Virginia Tech as Coach Pete Demore went out there. Might also be to be careful with Courtney Day if we can get her out, great. But Vivi Martinez right now has a single early in the first inning, but other than that, they've kept her under control. If I'm Pete Demore, I'm saying, hey, I'd rather go after the freshman who struggled a little bit than let this veteran beat us right now. Take on 2-0. What would you think of that one? Oh, if she's sitting out her half, I understand taking that pitch, but that was a whole ball on plate right there in the strike zone. I feel like that's a pitch Courtney Day can drive, but again, there could be a take sign on knowing that Emma Lindley's been struggling a little bit. Another good pitch. Well, you can't take back to back. Both of those were too much ball on the plate to take those pitches and not re be ready to drive them. Can Day deliver? Can Limley send us to extras? Peeling down to first, did not go. 
Emily remembering back to the first inning, she got Courtney Day to chase a rise ball outside. She shakes to that pitch. Big moment right there for a sophomore to shake off the pitch that was called. Almost got Day to go around for the third out. Said earlier this one would have a super regional feel. 3-2 winning run over on first. Bottom of seven, tied 5-5. Day looks at the pitch, a strikeout from Limley. Extra innings, we will go. Emma Limley shuts the door. Texas opting to leave right-hander freshman Sitlali Gutierrez in, who came out came in to record the third out of the seventh inning. Tournament play to keep things moving. Go into international tiebreaker. The last out of the previous inning will start at second base. So Emma Ritter put on second base already. Texas will start their half with Courtney Day or a pinch runner on second base. Back up the middle being waved home. It's deep into center. Hokies break the tie. So Ritter scores. Off of Fagan's back. Big opportunity for Cameron Fagan to get her first hit of the game. The first hit of the day. This is an outside pitch by Gutierrez. My question is, why is Texas's outfield so far back with a runner on second? There was no play at home whatsoever. But the Hokies go ahead and strike first in this eighth inning. Coach DeMoore, no doubt about that. He was well out there, pointing straight to home for Ritter to make her way to give the Hokies one run advantage, and we go ahead in the eighth. Pinch runner, Kelsey Brown coming in the spot of Fagan. Over at first. Pop up to short, into the glove of Washington for out number one. First baseman, Jamie Bailey. Both hitters that Sitlali Gutierrez has faced in this inning using that screwball away from the left-handed hitters. But both of those, more off the end of the bat, even Cameron Fagan's hit, first hit of the day for her, up the middle, but still wasn't barreled up extremely hard, just in good placement. Freshman doing well attacking the strike zone. Brown over at first, one of the fastest athletes that Coach Demore's ever ever coached. He's ranting and raving all interview about her speed and how well she can run. Right on cue, goes, the ball hits her. So into scoring position, the pinch runner. You can hear the fans, they're all griping that she left early. And she did right there, you see her step early, but first base umpire doesn't call it. She's safely into second base. And the Hokies have another runner in scoring position. Go. 
2-0 count to Jamie Bailey. Hard on the ground to second. Martinez relays for the out. You talk the importance of this game, and obviously both teams want to win and want that win in their belt, but RPI-wise and down the line, two teams that figure to be very much in their goals to be in the NCAA conversation, a win like this, loss like this, when the committee's starting to look, and obviously that's so far away, but these games are so important because of that. They are important, and with how close these two teams are, you really, the RPI won't change, so a loss in a game to a team ranked right above or right below you isn't going to be as detrimental as one that's a bigger space on the ranking scale but either way, a win in a game like this just shows how you can compete against a top 10, top 15 team. Say, look at Texas last year, you're right on the cusp there of, hey, are you close enough to host? And you look at that, well, it was a win against Virginia Tech, especially when you were at home, versus a loss against Virginia Tech. Granted, these two teams will play, but the things like this that are at stake, obviously early in the season, but quality matchup between both of these teams where they get to first and foremost learn about one another, increase the stakes. But from our perspective, broadcasting wise, we get to look at the big picture. Yeah, big picture. These are, But that's why you put these games on your schedule so early yep. in the season because you can't do it later because you want to keep everyone healthy for conference and make sure that you're putting a good run together for conference as that title is important as well. But yeah, in this situation, a win I almost feel like it's a win is great for whoever wins, but if you lose this game, it's not as much of a detriment, yeah. if that makes sense. Much more benefit to the winner than there is a hurt to yeah. the loser. And plus how close this game is, and you have to know at some point the committee has to take into effect or into consideration when it's an ITB game versus a game that plays out straight through. Yeah, Texas already with a tie on their record when they played Kentucky that was due to travel constraints that that game had to just be cut at 4-4. Yeah, they already have a tie and you know, I think the big thing is when you go into ITB, you're automatically putting runners in scoring position. So that's not a run that's necessarily earned by the winning team because you're already putting them there and I don't know how much they take that into consideration, but to me it changes the ball game. Brown is over on third with the one-two pitch that is over our heads. Yeah, I guess that's just my basketball brain. I'm so locked into tournament talk. And yeah. We're uh, thinking of, well, well, how does this affect? But No, it does. I mean, you talk about the Kentucky game. Texas loses that because Kentucky was ranked lower than them. And that's, that's a conversation the committee has later on is, you know, you were ranked here at this time and this is the loss you have. But at the same time, you end up in a tie a lot less of a conversation. One, two on the ground. Martinez flips over to first, so Texas will need one. Longhorns when we come back. Martinez, Whitaker, Atwood, trailing by one. Get you across the street, Mitchell Daly. Texas Longhorns taking on Indiana coming up next. First pitch slated for bottom of the hour. We're in extra innings across the street. Red and Charlene McCombs Field, weekend number three. Two top 15 teams. Number 12, Virginia Tech taking the lead. In the international rules, so starting these extra innings off with a runner on second. Hokies capitalized to take the advantage. It's the first lead that they've had in the ball game. Camille Connor will be the runner on second for Texas. Better at the plate, Viviana Martinez. And Corona with more speed than Courtney Day, so Texas is going to put her on, allow her to be on the move. Plus, will strike there called, but against Vivian Martinez, that pitch hasn't been a strike all day. The bunt popped up. And you talk little opportunities like this, things to work on execution. 
Can you get down a bunt to advance the runner and Martinez flies out? Well, you have to know that Emma Limley throws the ball up in the zone with really good upspin. So in this case, you have to make sure you keep the barrel above the ball. Better bunting attempt than that if you're going to move Corona to third. But that's the big first out that the Longhorns couldn't get. Granted, the Hokies didn't show bunt. Cameron Fagan was swinging away the whole time. But that first out changes the ball game. Jordan Whitaker back into her hitting slot as Bella Dayton took her first at bat of the year. Back in the sixth. Estelle Check trying to change the glove on her head, trying to change the mojo, find a comeback. It's now Texas Trails in a game that they looked to really have a strong command of. But for Limley, after that third inning, really effective work. It was, you would talk the difference in the loudness of outs, what Virginia Tech was getting off their bats and the pitches from Czech versus what Texas was doing against Limley. A lot of ground balls, nothing as hard hit as it was back when they scored their runs in the first and the third. Yeah, Limley just did a good job of Eliminating the middle of the part of the plate for the most part. Less mistakes, which Coach Pete Demore wants to see out of her probably from inning one. But when he goes back and looks at tape, he's going to have to be proud of the fact that she did make the adjustment to allow them to stay in this game and give them a chance to come back, which they did. Three fifty-seven. Whitaker is on the year. Flew out to left in the first, popped out to short in the third. So there are 111 pitches from Limley today. Texas has made her work. But her work has gotten more, a little bit more efficient, more effective as the game went on. 1-1 one, one pitch. Up high, that getting behind Aldridge. So Corona the tying run now on third. Lindley trying to use the rise ball here. It gets way away from Aldridge. Seen it ricochet off the padding back there. I don't think I've ever seen it get stuck. Technically, Aldridge can throw her hands up because you don't have to go pull it out once it gets stuck but Corona definitely not coming home because it's stuck in the padding. 3-1, Whitaker swings, count now full. There's a big pitch right there by Emma Lindley, using that low and away, low rise ball. Tying run on third, payoff pitch, one out. Texas. Taking at pivotal moments, their batters. You go back today against Limley. Another strikeout six for Limley. Well, Texas aggressiveness is what paid off early in the game. A full count, low rise ball. That's middle out right there. That's a pitch Texas can hit. Jordan Whitaker taking that for strike three. Big second out right there for Emma Limley and the Hokies. It was Day in the bottom of the seventh, that third out. We saw two pitches. Texas batters looking across and two big outs for Limley and Virginia Tech. Well, in those are situations you have to be looking to attack, not looking to walk. You need to make things happen against pitchers like Emma Limley and not pray that she goes ahead and nibbles on the strike zone. Right now she trusts her offense. So even if you score Camille Corona, she's going to assume that this is going to keep going into a ninth inning. Texas down to their final out if Atwood cannot Push Corona across. Texas cannot find a way. But 
Big situation for Texas freshmen here. But also a big situation for the sophomore and Emma Limley and the fact that she didn't have as many strikeouts as she's used to early in the game. Gave up five runs in the first three innings, but really settled down and threw almost a gem after the third to allow her team to get back in this game. Does she have one more pitch? Does Texas have one more swing? One, two. Good eye there by Reese Atwood. Emma Lindley trying to nibble a corner a little bit. Atwood 250 with two outs. 286 with runners in scoring position this season. Foul back. See Atwood getting her hacks in, staying alive. Swing and a miss. Hokies come from behind and win in extra innings. Well, Emma Limley didn't strike out as many as she's used to, but she struck out two in the most crucial part of this game with Texas threatening to tie the game with a runner at third. Big strikeouts of Jordan Whitaker and Reese Atwood to seal the win for the Hokies. So we are done for the day. Come back tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. We have a trio of games starting with Texas Southern against Virginia Tech. For Kat Osterman, our whole LHN crew, so long from Red and Charlene McCombs Field. Send you across the street. Keith Moreland, Greg Swindell, Texas baseball against Indiana coming your way.